All right, so this track has been pretty good to you, man. The last time you were here, it seemed like the same kick. Yeah. And the, in 2022, and then last year in the trials, <clears throat> what does this mean for you going out as a dog and winning this last one? Yeah. Um, I would say I came into this program five years ago, not knowing what to expect, and leaving here with ma winning two titles and making a world team is um is great but what i feel like i'm going to remember most is the bonds i've made with my teammates and my coaches and yeah lifelong lifelong friends and memories not just from racing but from you know the day in hardships of training in the rain and um hard sweat and tears with the boys joe your teammate nathan just came through a couple <laughs> minutes ago and said five straight go dogs yeah. do you guys feel like you've asserted yourself as mile u 1500 u <laughs> I yeah I would say so um yeah uh, I mean it's incredible to win five five straight titles and uh, I wouldn't be surprised if it if it went on longer um yeah I mean Andy Andy and Chris have both shown that they're great coaches and they, they get us ready for this day is there it's through, like final 100 meters yeah I don't really remember much all other than my stomach was hurting and I was just I looked to my left and I knew I was gaining on those guys and I just I, was, I honestly I was just getting prepped to dive um but yeah I just crossed that finish line and, and uh I was lucky to know I had won it but um yeah the boys took it to the line and uh, they made me fight for it they made me lose my lunch <laughs> over there yeah five in a row it's never been done in NCAA history for a team to do that yeah what, what does that mean for the program and just like you said talk about how the impact of Andy and Chris have been to you guys yeah I mean I think uh People always, you know, love fast times. Um, it's what gets media attention, but in, in all reality, we don't really care much, you know, for all that, like, publicity stuff. We care about getting this title today. And, um, yeah, we are prepped for any single race plan. I mean, if it was 334 today, uh, we all could have done it. If it was 355, we, we were ready for anything. And I think that's what makes us uh, go five in a row. We're just ready for anything when it comes to this day. You were seventh midway through the final time. What's going through your mind at that point? I was seventh. I just told myself the last thing I remember in that race was 250 to go, and I just said this race isn't over. Um, I don't remember anything after that. I, I yeah, I literally don't remember. Anything. Did you try to get the lead of the bell? I tried. That that was my plan. I was gonna I was just gonna go take it, but um, it seemed like I and it's funny because I always have like a plan going into all these races, but. Um, I know Andy trusts me, and if I instinctually know I need I need to wait just a little bit longer, um, I mean he trusts me to do that. So yeah, I just kind of thought the the boys were gonna take it out of themselves. Um, I think I think if I went for it, I still I still would have held everyone off, but I just thought it was a bit safer to let let them try and then really save something for the last 80 meters. You look very emotional when you cross the finish line. What were those emotions? It's my last race as a Washington Husky and. Um, just a real two years ago, I crossed the, I crossed the line. Um, and it was kind of a shock. Uh, I, I was really surprised that I won, but today it's, uh, I knew I could do it and I knew I was in shape to win and, um, it was, it wasn't, uh, oh wow. It was, I knew I could do it and I got it done. Flashes of 2022 kind of come back. Yeah, definitely down that home stretch. Yeah. Um, I mean, this is such a special meet and I mean, it's. Like I was thinking about this morning uh, when I was when I was journaling, but everyone uh, dreams about going to this meet, and it's really nice that you know I'm surrounded by a bunch of guys that are national champions, and I have coaches that are experienced enough to get us ready for this day, and honestly didn't have a worry in the world because I just knew um, when it came down to it, I'd be the most prepared guy on the line. How often do you journal? Uh, I I journal like maybe like. Well, I definitely journal at every single meet, but I don't know, two or three times a week, maybe. Yeah, I think it's really helpful. Yeah, when did you start doing that? Um, actually, I started journaling when my, I want to say, uh, my redshirt sophomore year. Yeah, when I was really struggling with just um, some mental things in racing and wasn't really, uh, wasn't really focusing on the racing because I was just getting too nervous. But journaling really helped, um, you know, get my nerves under control. I know you're. What gave you the idea to do it? Andy. I know your sister's one of your biggest supporters, yeah. uh, and she ran for University of Washington. What did she say to you this morning, or if she said anything to you? Yeah, yeah. I, I talked to her this morning. She just said, um, "It's such a special moment, and it's your last day as a dog." And 
she just said she she believed in me and she knew I was going to give it my all today no matter what and um, no matter the result she was going to be proud of me and and the last time to run with those two guys yeah what, what does that mean to you yeah I mean it felt like every other day I'm out there warming up with them we're doing our warm-up routine and we're doing our strides and um, I, I know I know I'm ready because I know they're ready and we all get confidence uh, being with each other so um, it means everything having those two with me they're my best friends are my brothers and I love them do you know what your 